Welcome back, everybody. This is DDP, back with the second edition of The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Yes, this is the third game of the year, only the second edition. I told you we weren't going to get every one of them. If you're watching this now, you'll see that uh, maybe you'll see Big Game James put out one of these this morning on his channel. Basically, my version here for the Prospect channel is going to be kind of a stitching together of his and mine to kind of give a, a fuller perspective of that. It won't be the entirety of his and the entirety of mine back to back or anything, uh, but kind of a back and forth uh, as certain points complement each other or vibe off of what the other guy was saying. So let's get into the Mavericks 113-111 loss last night in New Orleans. First, let's talk about the good. I like to think I'm generally positive these days. I'm optimist. Not always the case, but I feel like these days I'm a little bit more optimistic. The good, Spencer Dinwiddie, Luka Doncic, Christian Wood combined for 84 points on 32 of 55 shooting. Need to do the math? Don't worry, I already did it. That's 58.2% from the field. That kind of production on that kind of efficiency for your essentially big three is phenomenal. You're going to win a lot of games when you're getting that kind of production. Unfortunately, this was not one of those games. Uh, another good, Christian Wood, 23 points in 29 minutes on 80% shooting, 8 of 10 from the field, 3 of 3 from beyond the arc. The dude's killing it. He really is. Uh, he had, in his debut, he had, what, 25 points in 24 minutes, the next game 25 and 25, and then this game 23 and 29. By the way, he was 23 and 23 at one point. It just kind of trailed off there at the very end of the game as uh, the situation kind of got a little bit more choppy and he was in and out. Uh, of the rotation depending on you know what they were trying to do like if they wanted more defense out there he wasn't in the game but if they wanted like length or an offensive weapon for their possession then they were putting him back in and I just think it kind of broke things up a little bit and threw him out of a rhythm but even still Christian Wood phenomenal efficiency for Dallas early on I can tell he's being patient but also he's a little frustrated he wants to start it, it is no doubt he wants to start even though he, this role is giving him everything he wants, I think if this role would actually give him 30 or 33 minutes, let's say, a game, and would have him in in crunch time, I feel like that would maybe make him okay, not necessarily being a quote-unquote starter. But I also think he looks at this and says, as far as free agency, my value is going to be highest if I'm actually starting. So that's what I want to do. I get it. I get it. But, you know, for now, this is what it is. In all, it's a good so far for Christian Wood. Uh, another good, I would say, the flashes of last year's team is there. Even though the offensive game planner, if you will, Igor, left for Brooklyn, you still have a very good offense, and that's not just because you have Luka, obviously, but you still have very good ball movement, and you have a lot of guys who can do things. This wasn't necessarily the game to be that shining endorsement for the rest of the guys. Again, we'll get into that. But uh, in this, the ball movement's there. The team can score in a hurry when it wants to. When it wants to just put the pedal to the metal and bury you, it's capable of doing that to most anybody they play. Um, the good for me in this, in this game was Luka Doncic. Luka, you know what he did. Uh, 37 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists. Also was good with Spencer Dinwiddie. He's continuing to play really good basketball right now. 24 points. Two assists, uh, I mean, two rebounds, five assists, was hitting big shots, had um, shooting still good from the field. I mean, he came in shooting 50% from the field, and he's playing really well. You know, he's been a career 41% free th uh, three, uh, field goal percent shooter in his career, and he's playing really good. He's playing real good off ball defense, he's going to the hole. He's not being ball dominant, just over dribbling. He's really settling into his role, and I like what he's doing, and um, uh, he's really been playing well. So that's another good Christian Wood, once again. I think this is most minutes he played, 29 minutes, I believe. 23.6 boards was effective, once again. Gave him an inside-outside inside, presence. He's continuing to do it. Uh, you love the acquisition that he's bringing to the table. Um, I know a lot of people say, man, he needs to start, but you ain't got no firepower off the bench on the inside. Max Cleaver has 7.5 boards, but he's not really giving you points really an effective points off the off, off the bench so he's got to continue to come off the bench even though we probably want him to start so that was definitely good also josh green got some good minutes um not really uh scoring a lot of points but i think he can be a real defensive stalwart on the team he's got good size six five about 200 pounds 
very active as far as on the defensive side of the ball. Just continue to get him minutes and let's see if he can grow into a good defensive role. Another good, um, good for the Dallas Mavericks, in my opinion, was Capazzo is a guy that, um, and uh, forgive me if I didn't say the name right, I will get it right. Um, but he came over, uh, one of Luca's guys, um, and uh, you know I've been clamoring to have that Dennis Smith Jr. Uh, signing and how you know you play smaller defensive guards where you had C.J. McCollum, you had uh, Alvarado, uh, Graham. Those are smaller guards that will give like Luca and the Dinwiddies and those guys fits because if they press you and, and, and really uh, play on tough on ball defense, it's not that they can't handle it. It's just the fact that they're going to make you tired. And if those guys are, are, are making you run around and, you know, in your chest defensively and Luca's got to play those men, it makes you hard to come back and score on the offensive end. So that's something that they're going to have to keep our eyes on going forward. Those smaller defensive guards, they may have a problem with those. But I like the way Capazzo played, man. He had three points, uh, two assists, two steals. Um, I thought he showed a lot of speed. I was a little suspect in him coming in. But he showed a lot of speed, man, up and down the court. He played really, you know, I, I like the defense that he played, good on-ball defense. He's quick with his, he snaps his passes really well. He looks like he really can get the offense together with the way you really want to do. Um, so I really like what he brought to the table in that aspect as far as that uh, with Capazzo. So I like to see a, him continue to get more uh, a role. Um, because you're going to need him, especially that speed off the bench, that defense, those two steals were big. So um, that was the good, you know, and I really liked the, he was productive off the bench for me. So I like that. The problem, and uh, this will get us into our first bad. This team is not good at keeping their foot on an opponent's throat, let alone pressing down and just ending. it. They blew a 22-point lead in the opener in the second half against Phoenix. That third quarter was disastrous for Dallas and Phoenix, but even then, they should have put it away in the fourth quarter. They steadied the ship, got back in control, and then they let it go late. They let Phoenix basically close the game on a huge run and uh, beat them in the last 10 seconds. That sucks. Problem is, it kind of happened again here. Even though uh, New Orleans built this huge lead early on, at one point they were leading like 40 to 31. Dallas was doing nothing, especially in that first quarter, defensively to stop them. JaVale McGee was getting torched inside. Uh, by Valachunas, they they weren't doing anything to really slow New Orleans, but they did eventually kind of assert themselves in midway through the fourth quarter. They were in control. They looked like they were, okay, we've steadied the ship. We're going to close this thing out. And then New Orleans goes on a 15-3 to run, and the entire complexion changes. Now, New Orleans no, taken nothing from them. They are a very talented, quality team. If healthy, they're capable of beating most anybody. Uh, in, in the West. I, I do believe that. The problem is this is not a night Dallas should have lost to New Orleans. We'll get into that uh, here in a moment, but the inconsistency is a bad for me. It's only three games. It's an incredibly small sample size, but Dallas's inability to put some of these opponents away when they've got them down double digits in some cases, completely demoralized like Phoenix looked to be, and then not being able to just end it. They seem like they get kind of bored and they're just kind of like coasting. Like they're just like, all right, let's just run this out and then uh, we'll turn our attention to the next game. Well, now, not once but twice, it's led to them getting basically punched in the mouth and they're not able to really set themselves again. Or worse, in the case of the Phoenix game, they do set themselves again uh, and then they take a second punch and it's like, oh, uh, okay, I didn't expect to get hit again. Oh, well, all right, we didn't really need this game anyway. I don't, I don't like that, and that's something that the, that's just a mentality thing. That's a, that's a leadership thing, and I'm not saying that is an example of bad leadership. I'm just saying that's an area they have to step up and really rally. They have to get total, complete buy-in from everybody, and that, that's Kid, that's Luca, uh, everybody kind of emanating that and that just unwillingness to settle or to take their foot off the gas. That's what they need. So, as I said, second let up in three games, and you could say, hey, the one win in emphatic fashion, yes, but Memphis was coming off of a very quick turnaround in a very tight, close game with a very late arrival in Dallas um, before that game. So, while it was a phenomenal game from Dallas, I will caution that's a little bit of an aberration. Yes, you beat a very good opponent, and you, de you just demolished them throughout that game. 
great, but it's circumstances that are not ideal and were weighted in your advantage. So you should have done what you did. And the other two cases where it was more even more neutral for the most part, you kind of est the bed in the closing moments, and that's not good. Another bad here, Christian Wood is not getting uh, crunch time minutes. He's, he's not getting used enough. He has yet to crack even 30 minutes uh, in a game this year. Last night was his high, 29 minutes, his high for the season. Again, he's a point a minute when he's out there. He's splashing threes. He's dribbling. Uh, he's taking guys off the dribble. He's getting to the rack. He's an alley-oop threat. He's a guy who's able to um, you know, make the extra pass, make the smart play in the pick and roll. If you find him, he's finding the corner shooter with a good look, uh, hitting him with a, a nice pocket pass to give him a good wide open look. He is everything you want. He is clearly far and away your second best player, but with the rotation like it is now, you're having a situation where uh, Luca, I think, is sitting too long at the start of the fourth quarter and Wood uh, is playing too long of a stretch from the end of the third to the start of the fourth. And the reason I say that's a problem is because these two guys on the floor together are like an obscene, uh, obscenely positive high rating uh, in the plus minus category. They wreak havoc and there's just not enough overlap right now in their minutes. And I don't know if that's the coaching staff worried about defensive liabilities, but they are not giving them enough time on the floor together. And I think it's it, as good as Wood has been. I feel like it's actually kind of limiting a little bit. You, you have him, this guy that can just completely tear apart any opposing game plan. And you're not really using him to that full potential. And in games like last night where it's a close game and it's kind of like, hey, man, we'd really like to have this, not having him in, in crunch time, at least not consistently, uh, is, is a little bit of a problem, and it is starting to frustrate him, and I get it. But I'm, I'm going to look at the positive of what his production is, and I'm going to say, hey, it's really, really early. There are 82 of these games in the regular season. Uh, there's no reason to believe he won't get more minutes as time goes, just like Reggie Bullock, even though it's not apples to apples. Reggie Bullock didn't get a lot of minutes or a lot of consistent play when he first started playing in Dallas last year. And he eventually went on to be a major stalwart of the rotation, a huge part of what they did last year. I feel like Christian Wood's going to get that same opportunity. We just were impatient, and understandably so. Um, but I'm going to bank on, you know what? Kidd and his staff earned a lot of goodwill last year. I'm not going to burn it down because of three games and a disagreement over five or six minutes for Christian Wood in the first three games this year. Uh, Pelicans, I mentioned earlier, 56 points in the paint. Whew, that's not good, man. That's not good. Now, Dallas had 50-plus in the paint itself. That's good. That's very good. I like that. Very much different from last year. But 56 in the paint defensively, eh. for a team whose kind of identity is built more around its defense now, I would say, maybe not maybe not like overwhelmingly so, but it's viewed as a more complete team and defense is a huge part of its identity now, that is yikes. The bad was this. The New Orleans Pelicans, without Zion Williamson, without Brandon Ingram, and you out-rebounded them 37 to 26. You had out-rebounded them. You had 11 offensive boards in this game, but they had 56 points in the paint. That's not good. And eight of their nine players were in double figures in this game. Um, so Valachunas really was uh, working JaVel McGee. Um, they were Trey Murphy was hitting big shots. Dyson Daniels, who had his first significant minutes, he was a high draft pick coming out, I believe, the G League, 19 year old, nice player, 6'6. He was giving Dallas fits, man, and uh, he came off with significant minutes, had like 22 minutes, 11 points, and he was just pretty much all around the ball. So that's a bad thing. Eight or nine players in double figures, and their two top guys were out. Um, they were effectively, they were consistently getting points in the paint. They were consistently taking to the hole. They were hitting big shots on the outside. So that was a bad for me. You know what's really yikes? We're going to go into the ugly here. The Pelicans were without three starters last night, including their top two players. Ow. Ow. No Zion. No Brandon Ingram. That's inexcusable. I, I think Dallas absolutely got caught looking past uh, New Orleans, flat-footed. New Orleans had eight of its nine players who appeared in the game 
score in double figures. Good googly moogly. That is such incredible balance. And again, the Pelicans are a good, deep team. And that was a lot of gritty, real good effort defensively, like one-on-one defense. They were Ding up Luca late, and they were making him work and frustrating him a little bit. Luca had 37 in the game, but it felt like in crunch time, he just wasn't getting anything he wanted. He was missing step-back threes because Luca loves to force step-back threes. And uh, it just wasn't dropping, and it seemed like he was kind of settling, like he was bothered by their defense, and he didn't really want to get in there and get knocked around as much. So, yeah, credit to them. They threw him off his game, but this is not a game you should have lost. I mentioned that big run they had in the fourth quarter, the Pelicans, the 15-3 run, I think it was, that flipped the game on its head. Um, and Dallas, they seesawed back and forth. They kept it. They cut it to a point, got the ball. Um, you know, Luka misses the buzzer beater. That would have won it. But we, we've kind of seen this trend in both losses. Luka loves that left wing extended three. That's his spot. We get it. But he always, always, always settles for that shot in that moment. I really want him to at least work that mid-range a little bit. Maybe you don't get all the way to the paint, but force the ref's hand. Attack the basket. Do something. Even if it's a driving kick, even if you're not getting the shot, you got to do something because everyone in the world knows you're going to run to that left wing extended and you're going to take a fall away deep three. Like not even, not only is that, a very long shot anyway, but you're taking it a foot or two back from the line, sometimes three or four feet back from the line. And so it's like, you're capable of that. Yes. But you should not rely on that primarily. That should be like, that should be your party trick that you can bust out, but not that you overexpose again and again and again. So I I think that's an ugly Maverick should be three and O to start the year. Instead, they're one and two. That's disappointing. Um, non big three players. I referenced this earlier, 58.2% 58.2% for Luca, Dinwiddie, and Wood, and non, non quote big three players for Dallas last night. Nine of 27. That's 33.3%. Uh, James mentioned in his video, Dorian Finney-Smith and um, Bullock, terrible shooting last night between the two of them. It was like whew, I don't remember the stat he said. It was like two of 12, something like that. Just bad. I, I know Reggie was one of eight. So that's, that's rough. You can't have that from two of your starters. They might be 3 and D guys, but you got to get at least some production from them elsewhere. Um, that, that's really going to hurt you. And uh, through three games, JaVale McGee is uh, not, not looking like the answer. They promised him the starting role when he came to Dallas. That was a big part of their pitch. Right now, I would be hard-pressed to say, again, right now, I would be hard-pressed to say for a regular season player – that Dwight Powell is not the better option. And that feels insane to say. I feel a little bit crazy having just said that. But what you're getting out of JaVale McGee right now is not what you expected to get. And I think it's a little bit of a liability. And I think that's why his minutes are partly down right now. He's not getting a lot of minutes. And I think it's kind of that Dwight Powell situation where his limitations are making it hard to play him a lot more minutes. So I get it. You got to kind of integrate him. It takes time sometimes. But I'd like to see a little bit more run with McGee and Wood on the floor together. I feel like we haven't gotten enough of that yet, and I feel like that's a very uh, dynamic look that they could throw out there. And if we're going to get to a quick ugly, kind of before we get off of here, I would say the ugly to me is Dorian Finney-Smith, Reggie Bullock combined for 3 of 13 from the field, 1 of 8 from 3-point range. That's a bad. That's two of your starters right there who need to get points. I know they're not guys that are going to get 20, 25 points a game, but they got to be effective. I mean, it can't just be a defensive thing that they're going to bring to the table. they got to be able to score points, especially when Tim Hardaway Jr. was injured, didn't play. It was a big thing um, for them to really be able to really hit that um, and make those points. So 3 of 13, one of eight from the three-point range, that's not good for Dory Finney-Smith and Reggie Bullock. They've got to be better, so that was a bad. And another, I'm, I'm sorry, that was an ugly. And another ugly was JaVale McGee, in my opinion. He is a player that I guess they promised him a starting role when he came over to the Dallas Mavericks. And right now, he's got to be better. Uh, uh, Valachunas was consistently beating him on the inside. Um, with points, and JaVale McGee was never a guy anyway that you were ever really going to count on for any points, okay? So, yes, he had eight points, but he only had two rebounds, one block shot. 
you're a seven foot one guy, they're relying on you for athleticism, your height, your length, be able to be an inside presence, at least especially on the defensive side. That's one of the reasons why they brought you in here. But for them to promise him a starting position and JaVale McGee has never really did anything in the NBA, it's kind of crazy to me. He's got to do better, um, effectively, immediately. Um, to me, if he's going to continue to play like that, then just bring him off the bench and start Dwight Powell. Uh, because Dwight Powell's not going to get you any points just like McGee, but I feel like Dwight Powell's going to give you a little bit more effort at times. Um, I think he's just going to play a little bit harder, and I think that's one of the issues I always had kind of with JaVale McGee. He's kind of been like the, I'm not going to say goofy, but it's just like it's not, it's not consistent with his play, and he's got to continue to be better. So that's an ugly for me. He's got to step up and play that center position the right way. And if he's not, then he's got to go to the bench, in my opinion. You start Dwight Powell and then bring McGee off the bench because we haven't seen the Christian Wood, JaVale McGee uh, combination. And I need to see that on the inside so that can be more of an inside presence. So I think Jason Kidd and them need to work that in, in my opinion. And I think if he would have played better, it would have helped the uh, Mavericks possibly win that game. That is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Dallas drops one. 13 111 in New Orleans dropped to one and two on the year. I'm not panicking. I'm not. There's just no reason to panic this early. I anticipated a slow start, and uh, right now it looks like that's what we're going to get. But the promising thing that we didn't have at this point last year the flashes of what's good are frequent. They're there, and it looks like the team is not only in those flashes as good as last year, but in fact, better. Than last year, and I and I think you have the ultimate game breaker in Christian Wood. Now, I've seen enough at this point. I extend Christian Wood. Um, maybe he's not super uh, excited for that right this moment, just because of the the minutes discrepancy and the crunch time lack of play. I want to see those increase for sure, but uh, I'm not I'm not panicking on this team. I think you've got something. You just have to figure out how to make it work, and I trust this coaching staff to do that. But that's the good, the bad, the ugly. If you haven't already, drop a like, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, subscribe to Big Game James, be on the lookout tonight for Positively Relentless. I think this is episode 23, 23, I want to say. So be on the lookout for that, and uh, we'll talk Mavericks thus far this season. Mix in a little Cowboys just because they got stuff going on too. And uh, that'll be tonight, 8.15 Central Standard Time. Be on the lookout. Until next time, guys, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.